We're good, Amber. All right. Welcome, everybody, to month six of Ignite the Iron. I cannot believe June. It's already June 18th. I literally just wrote down the 18th and it's wild to me. Um, but we're so excited that you are here. Thank you for being here live. Uh, if you're watching the recording, thank you for watching. And we are going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to say a prayer real quick, and we will tell you what we have in store for you this evening. So, dear Lord, I'm coming to you in this moment. I'm bringing into you every single person who is speaking tonight. Lord, I ask that you would just prepare their thoughts and you would just guide their words and you would guide um, their actions as they speak life and wisdom into all of us this evening. Um, be with us in everything that we do in our businesses and let it bring glory to you. In your name we pray. Amen. So if you are here, do you want me to explain it, Chas? Yeah, that's fine. Way through the year. That's crazy, Whitney. Okay. Me, you? Yeah, that's fine. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so tonight between myself, Chastity, Whitney, and Anya, we all picked one leader and they are going to be the ones bringing the fire to you guys tonight. Um, you guys hear from us a lot, but it's um, really, really important that you guys also know that number one, you have a lot of different peers in the leadership role that also do a lot of amazing things. Um, we need to learn from each other constantly and everyone has something to give. Um, I don't know where I was going with that. Okay. So we have four different people, obviously um, each of us chose one person. So if you want me just to throw out who goes first. Is that what you guys would like? I'm looking at y'all's faces, except for Whitney. Chastity. Okay. Or does anybody want to volunteer to go first? Yeah, out of our four. Only you guys know the four because we didn't tell anybody who was going. So. All right. I vote Martha's going first because she is the face that I see. And then Elizabeth, you're going after her. And then we can. And then we'll do Alex and then we'll do Brittany. Okay. Right. Perfect. Is that right? Okay. I think so. Yeah. And, um, just, I'm sure everyone knows, but 10 ish minutes, um, if you guys go over a little bit, it's fine. If you go less, that's fine. We're all taking notes. We're all here to learn. So excited. Yep. To hear from so you. excited to hear from y'all. Take it away, Martha. Hey guys. So I am Martha Campos. Um, I just, I'm brand new director. I just hit director in May. So um, Whitney asked me to come here and talk to you guys a little bit about how I hit director in May. So first, I wanted to tell you that um, when I joined Sensi in August 2021, I had zero intention of working the business. I was actually working two other direct sales at the time, and my Sensi took off because so I actually had a flipped party I hosted for Sylvia and she ended up flipping my party. And that was the month where I got the free shooting star award and all that stuff or the kit. So it was a very exciting month and I just took off. She had booked like 11 parties from my party. So I took them and I ran with it. And I still was like, uh, I really just want the discount. I live in Hawaii and minimum shipping was $20 at the time. So I that's what I joined for. But it wasn't enough for me. And I decided that even though I was doing well with all three companies, I needed to reach my full potential. And in order to do that, I needed to pick a company. So I picked Sensi. <laughs> it was a really easy choice for me because I had just earned Cabo and I had just promoted a superstar consultant. But mostly like the big thing with it too was Sensi was the one consumable Com like consumable items, consumable products. So I could have my customers and take good care of my customers and they would keep coming back to me, hopefully. So I closed shop on my other two businesses and I registered for SFR in Charlotte. Going to Cabo and going to Charlotte last year were huge for me. They lit a fire under my butt. <laughs> I came all the way from Hawaii to Cabo, or I'm sorry, went to Charlotte. That was actually during my visit to the mainland. I was still struggling to be paid at title as a superstar consultant, but my numbers were huge. Like I was doing very, very well myself. Um, I don't say that to brag. I say that because we have control over what we're doing. We don't have control over what our teamies are doing. Yes, we sponsor, 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 but we do not have that control. <clears throat> 
so I was missing something with my team. And really, to be honest, I almost promoted in October of last year. And I was kind of glad that I didn't. I know that sounds funny, but so I had 6,000, almost 6,200 PRV in October. So my reason for almost hitting director in October was for me. And then I was going to have to make everything up on my own. So I was going to be I was going to be on the struggle bus. I was going to be in the queue real fast. <clears throat> but May was different. In May, I had eight active frontline rather than just three. And my personal PRV was 4K, which is still pretty high, but that's my goal. My goal is always three to four. So trust me, I know it's still not enough and that I'm a baby director, but Whitney told me, and she's so smart, that the team that got me here is not the team that's going to keep me here. And this is just a reminder to keep growing. So I have my monthly non-negotiables. My monthly non-negotiables for myself, know that you cannot set these for your team. You can teach them to set these for yourself, but again, you cannot control your team members. So my non-negotiables are two to three K PRV and to sponsor one to three people. Then teach my teamies how to do the same, the teamies who want it. <clears throat> I've seemed to struggle with having either a successful team or having great numbers myself. I couldn't seem to get both. So regardless of the example I was setting, something was missing. I have yet to find the balance. I don't know if there is a balance. I'm sure that there is, and I will find it. But here are the things that I did differently in May. I did not reach out to consultants who hadn't done anything for months and ask them how I can help them because their no answers in the past are an answer. It's okay to extend an offer. Um, sorry. It is okay to extend an offer that I will be here when you are ready. And if you're ready, I'm here, but you don't have to keep reaching out to them. Not everyone wants it like you do. I spent my time on my teamies who did work and did want more out of Sensi. Sensi offers us a business opportunity. Not everyone can make it a successful business. And that's just the blunt truth. What is important as you build your team is to know that making that decision is not on you. You don't get to decide who can make it a business or who wants to make it a business. So I shared the opportunity with everybody. I shared it with my best customers even. This can be really hard for some people because they're worried about losing that PRV because those are their best customers. But I promise you, it, it helps so much because they already love the product and they're going to share it with everyone. And that's one of the most important things is to use, love, and share the product. As a leader in this business, I truly believe that what changed my game was accepting that not everyone can do it. <clears throat> I keep seeing all this stuff on social media about how, what's the word? What's the words? They say, let me just read it. Cause they keep saying that all the stuff on, that not everyone is a prospect. So stop trying to prospect everyone. You know, all those things you see coming up and down, they're trying to get you to take their trainings and all of that. While we know that's true, that not everyone is the prospect, again, like I said earlier, we don't get to decide that. So ask everyone. They get to decide if they want the business and what they want out of it. So ask them, sponsor them, and teach them what you're doing because they may be that unicorn that wants it. You're probably going to have teamies who sit at zero. I mean, it's just part of it, but you are going to find that unicorn. I found one last month. And she was actually someone who I just met at an Easter egg hunt. I did a children's event and this girl sold 11 air purifiers last month. Yes. Yes, Chastity, 11. <laughs> so <laughs> she was on fire and she is, you know, she was that unicorn. That one person can completely change your whole business. But again, like Whitney said, the team who got you here isn't the team who's going to keep you here. So you got to keep going. So my advice to you is number one, to prioritize. If that means dropping a couple things that you don't need to do, then do that. Number two is don't prospect. Share the opportunity that Sensors Sensi offers and do not make the decision for anyone as to whether or not they want it or not. That's not your decision to make. And number three you have teamies who are constantly reaching out to and are either being ghosted or you're never following through with what they are going to do, reach out to them and let them know, I am here for you. 
if and when you decide that you want my help. Otherwise, I'm going to focus my energy on those who want a successful business just like I do. And number five, set your non-negotiables and teach those on your team to do the same. If you're putting your energy into those who want to and accomplish what you have, they will work hard just like you. And number five, remember and remind your teenies that you can do hard things. That's all I have. Well, hot damn. I mean, I don't even know what to say after that. That was so freaking good. So good. Um, Your girl needs to do a training for us because I need to know what she's saying to people about 11 air purifiers. We see you, Kevin. Um, and <laughs> insane. we're trying to make her stay in the bed. Um, yeah. Martha, you are like the bomb.com. That was great. I absolutely loved hearing all of your tips. Um, no, you, you slayed it. You slayed it. If you <laughs> want to share your notes with any of us so we can put them in the Google drive, that would be really great too. Um, because I really, really loved all of your tips. Okay. And next up we have Elizabeth. This is not fair. <laughs> so I know you want to put my notes in the Google Drive right here. You better stop. I'm going to put yours in there too. If you want us to put them in there, you're going to okay. do it. Let's go, girl. Um, so my name is Elizabeth Rigsby. I um, hit director. I don't even know. Two, I, I don't know when. Um, two, three years ago. Um, I have struggled to hit numbers. I have had a lot, a lot, a lot in my life go wrong. Um, and then some that have happened and been great. So, um, I'm an IVF mom. I fought infertility for five years, three years of medicated and, um, I ride horses and lost three horses in a year. And so it has kind of been me trying to fight to get my sensei and to get my life back to a normal. Um, also learning how to be a mom to now a one-year-old um, along with, I haul horses for a living and I work on horses. So I'm on the road all the time. It's insane. So when Chastity asked me, I was like, I have nothing to bring because I, I'm just not being a good leader right now. And I'm the first to acknowledge it. And so I did what I always do when I need to find information or something powerful. I go to Trent Shelton on my podcast. And um, it's crazy how every single time I pull up um, him, it is always something I need to hear um, that he has posted that week. And so this week, um, it was one that he did for a training in January and it was on habits. And I think habits are so, so, so important. Um, kind of, it all kind of encompasses with what Martha said. Um, but ultimately his first thing is said that he said is doing things only when you feel like, like it, hold on, doing things only when you feel like it does not create legendary things in your life so think about something the last thing that you really wanted in your life and you wanted to change it and why did you want to change it so you have to make those habits more important um because you're you're not like I don't wake up in the morning and just have that energy that drive like I have to wake up and yes, I don't want to do things all the time, but you still have to show up. And so if you have those habits, you're going to keep, you're going to like have the momentum to keep doing it. Um, also, he said, you know, um, when you think about your dreams, say, you know, I... I think back to, I wanted to walk away from dental assisting. I knew I never was, my mom was a stay-at-home mom or not a stay-at-home mom. She was self-employed. My dad was self-employed. I knew that I wasn't meant to be somebody that worked for somebody. And that was my dream. My husband said, you know, this is what you have to do. And I shot for the stars. So was it 
was it easy? No, but I had to create habits of reaching out to people, of putting myself out there and making it myself sick with my other business to where I could grow a business that I could walk away from my dental assisting job to where I joke with my husband that I'll just go back. And he's like, why? You can work one day and make what you do in a month with my business, with my hauling business. Um, so you have to ultimately like Whitney, yeah, discipline. Like it's not fun all the time. Um, another thing he said is, um, habit, hold on. Oh my goodness. Habits separate people. Reflect on your life. And it is going to be the result of your habits. If your habits, no, if your life sucks, it's because your habits aren't good. And that is so true when it goes back to why my Sensi business has sucked. I have put my habits on the back burner and I have not stepped up to the plate. I have let too many things get in the way. I don't reach out to my team. I don't do the shout outs. I don't do the emails. And I can tell the ones that still want to work are still going to work. But when I send those emails and I send that recognition and I send those things, they do better at the end of the day. Um, so that just, that blew my mind. Um, and then, okay, his next thing was, what is a habit that you need to work on? Each month, 12 months in a year, each month, pick a new habit. So then by the end of the year, you'll have 12 new habits. So don't choose 15 habits. Like don't at the end of this call, hear what Martha said and say, oh, I loved all of these. And then say, okay, I like this. I need to reach out to my customers, my, my consultants. Like I need to do all these things tomorrow. You need to pick one thing, concentrate on that one thing until you're good at it. And then go to the next thing. Um, be very clear. Are you willing to do the habits that you need to do to accomplish your dreams? And are you willing to develop the habits to achieve the life that you dream of? Um. Comfort is the best friend of bad habits. I know that I don't want to reach out to consult or people and ask if they would like to have a party. It makes me sick to my stomach. It makes me want to puke. It makes me want to puke when I have to, you know, reach out and be like, hey, do you want, do you want to, you know, join? Do you want to do like, let's do this together. That makes me sick still. But if I don't get uncomfortable, I'm never going to grow and I'm never going to reach those goals. And my husband's going to be in the same horrible job 15 years down the road. So get uncomfortable, make your habits. Don't do them all at once. Trust me, like do not over, over extend yourself, especially if you're new to SFR and have never been to SFR, you're going to go to SFR and you're going to want to do everything. You're going to come back and want to do it all. Pick one thing every single month to do. And then at the end of the month or even by December, like you'll have so many more things that you have accomplished. That's all. Sorry. Yeah. I was talking. That was so great. That was so, so great, Elizabeth. And don't talk about yourself like that because you do have value to give. And I get emotional because, you know, I'm just, I don't know, I just do. So don't talk about yourself like that because you are amazing and you have so much value to give. And I am so thankful that you are with us and on my team and all of that. And just know that that was bomb.com and we all can hear great. Like those pointers were so, so great because habits are absolutely the fundamental, most important part of our business. Like when it comes down to it, our habits are going to define everything. Absolutely. And we definitely do need those notes as well. Um, okay. The next person is it, hold on, I'm going back to my text message. Is it Alex? Okay. Alex, you are up next and we are so excited. Can you hear me? 
Yes, I can hear you. Okay. <laughs> I have it pulled up on my laptop so I can see comments and I have it on my phone so I can talk. Um, okay, so I'm Alexandria Edwards. I am a director. I joined in 2020 and I hit director in November of 2021, I believe. Um, so Amber asked me to talk about building leaders and I was like, uh, I don't know that I get, I'm really good at building leaders, but I'll share what I do. So um, really, I think with leadership, it starts as soon as somebody joins, even though they don't have a team yet. I still consider everybody a leader because we all lead in different aspects of our life. Um, and whenever somebody joins from that moment on is where it all starts so we're we're working with them to hit shooting star um once we hit shooting star we're working really hard together to hit certified and then i do it bit by bit so we're working on shooting star first then we're going to certified then we're focusing on sensational start levels and that's where they start building their team because in order to get sensational start two and three you have to have a team um and so those are really big important things in my opinion that we focus on and it to me I think it's like an adrenaline rush too for them it's like okay I've hit this goal now what next now I've hit this now what next so I make sure in the very beginning as soon as they join they get that welcome email with everything listed on there um I help do their launch party of course and then I'm in constant contact with them um, every Monday, I do a weekly numbers update in my VIP group. So every Monday, I am pulling numbers. <laughs> when I pull the numbers just to do the shout outs for PRVs, then I go in and dig a little bit deeper. And I'm looking at the people in the shooting star. I'm looking at the people in um, Sensational Star and Essential to Certified. And I'm reaching out personally to those people. Hey, girl, you're only 235 PRV away from hitting certified, and which seems like a super scary number to a lot of people. So we break it down. Hey, that's only if you sell X amount of six packs of wax, or if you sell X amount of whip box. And breaking it down into those little bite sized pieces for people makes it easier for them to hit it and makes it easier for them to hit those goals. And that's what I do with everything. Um, now, once they've got out of their 70 days, um, I kind of keep them under my wing that whole time. I remember um, at boot camp, they showed us a video of a mama duck and the baby ducks in a tree. And once they got big enough, the mama duck just kind of jumped down out of the tree and went on about our business and the babies were stuck there and they're all like looking out. It's kind of an emotional video and kind of make you mad at the mama duck because it's like, damn, you're just going to leave all those little babies sitting in there. But they were in there and they're looking out and they had to be brave enough to jump out and fly on their own. And so that's what we have to kind of do after that 70 days. Um, but I'm still there always. And I'm always looking at the numbers and I'm always reaching out. and. You know, if you're watching those people under Shooting Star and Sensational Star and Certified, if you're constantly watching those people, you're watching all the new people coming in and you're seeing all the opportunity for the people that have new teamies. Okay, you've got somebody that's getting ready to hit Sensational Star level three. That means you're close to a promotion. So this is what you need. And if you've got this person that's almost going to hit star and this person that's almost going to hit lead and this person that's almost certified it's a trickle effect so you're getting them involved so that they're working with their team because if their team member is working then they're going to promote and so it all works together but you've got to keep everybody in the loop and communicate with them so that they all know what's going on and i mean it just it happens like a couple months ago she hit a couple months ago a girl hit superstar and she had a star underneath her and there was a lead underneath her and it, it was just all a trickle effect so I, I just feel like it's super important that you're pulling the report you're looking at everything and you're communicating the possibilities of what can happen if she hits this and she hits this then you're going to hit that and everybody works together then 
you know, overall, you, in the big picture, everybody's promoting. I don't really have much more to say than that because I don't really feel like I do a lot. I feel like I do what I think everybody is doing, but maybe everybody's not doing that. So, I mean, all the data is there on Workstation. Utilize it. Utilize it and make that contact with people. Well, number one, so, that, that was great. I'm sorry. Did I cut you off? No, nope, you're fine. <laughs> um, that was great. And don't downplay what you're doing because you're doing the most. You're doing a lot. Like you are absolutely like rocking it out. And if you're, if you're doing that and you're teaching your team members to do the same, like your team is just going to explode. So I absolutely love how you're using all of that data because I mean, I know me included, I can be very, I can be guilty of not knowing all of those numbers as specifically as you do and breaking it down like that. So that was such a great reminder. Thank you so much for that. That was so good. So You're good. Well, and then, I have something else to add. I just thought yeah. about it. <laughs> um, so I heard Martha say what she said about reaching out to people and um, the no response kind of lets you know where you're at with a person. And I get that and understand that. Um, but I never, ever, ever give up on these people. And I'll give you the perfect example why. Every month I send out a message. Hey, it's middle of the month. We still got this much time left. Do you need anything from me? And most of the time I get ignored. But during this last incentive, I had a girl who was getting ready to term. And it was literally like a week before she was going to term. And I sent out one last message. Girl, you've got a week left. Are you sure you don't want to do this? And she finally responded. And she responded, and we did a relaunch for her. And she got active before the month was over. She hit certified, which gave me incentive points. And the next month, she promoted to lead, which gave me more incentive points. So I know it's frustrating when they don't answer. I know you get aggravated, and it's like, oh my God, what is wrong with these people? Because we see the potential that they don't see in themselves. But always reach out because you never know when the time may be right for them to try to start over. Absolutely. And thank you for sharing that with us because you are absolutely right. Life changes on this within 30 seconds, someone's life can be completely turned upside down and you never know when they're going to need this opportunity. People are laying in bed at night, praying for what we have, and we just need to be there to offer it for them when they're ready. So thank you so, so much for sharing that with us. That was so great. And we want your notes too. Um, my face is I so don't have any. <laughs> Well, we love it anyway. We love it anyway. Okay. And then last, but certainly not least is Brittany and I'm going to meet myself. Hey guys, my name's Brittany. Um, so I'm in a director. Shoot, I don't even know. <laughs> I think it's been like a year and a half, two years. I don't know, honestly. Like I don't remember. But so I'm kind of gonna talk about what I do for my leadership. Um, I think it starts with you, and then as soon as you sponsor or like somebody sponsors, you, you need to be a leader. You need to follow up and train that person. So it doesn't matter if you're a director, a superstar, lead, it, it just certified. If you choose that you want to sponsor, then you need to have those leadership skills. Um, so I work with my team. Um, Anya made these boards. I'm like, hey, you're new to leadership. Check this out. This will help you learn how to do or create those bonds, I guess you can say. Um, I talk to my team a lot talk to my downline a lot. I think it's super important to get to know your downline um, because if you're not making those connections and then you pop in and be like, hey, I'm going to challenge you to do this. They're going to be like, who the F are you? Wh why? Who? What are you doing? So I'm always connecting with my team. Like tonight, I sent out messages to my frontline and my down. Hey, girl. Hey, whatever. Hey, love, I challenge you to get active this week, or I challenge you to get an extra 100 PRV. Um, I'm always giving my team challenges because I'm super transparent with them. They know where I stand with like my PRV and my business and they feed off of me. So if you're super transparent and you help your team can like continually and throughout the year and not just when you need to hit numbers or if you have a goal for yourself, 
you want to be that person that helps them reach their goals as well. Um, I always tell my team, you know, just because I'm a director, I don't feel like I'm better than you. I want you on the same level as me. I want you to walk beside me, not under me. Um, I don't feel anybody is better than me. I don't feel anybody is nothing less, you know, um, and then I always ask people, what are your goals? What is your why? Why are you in this? Because you need to know what they want. Is it a hobby or do they want to, um, or do they want to grow and, and bloom and be, be a business person? Um, and it's okay. I tell them, you know, it is okay. I'm literally just asking because I don't want to bug the crap out of you. If you just want a hobby. You know, some people want the community, but guess what? I don't stray away from them because they just want community because they want that community. I'm going to still treat them and still talk to them and still message them because that's why they join. Since he is about community. So why are we going to like push them to the side because they're not working how we want them to work? You know, not everybody is on the same page. Not everybody is a stay at home mom. Some people have multiple jobs and this is just for fun. Or they're trying to make this business for something for themselves. So I'm going to be that person to help them and lead them when they want to be led. You know, um, my team, they come to me because I feel like I am super transparent. Um, I told them too. So a lot of people are like, I have X amount of hours, blah, 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 which is true. But some people work night shift and they sleep during the day. And I tell them, you can message me on Facebook. You know, if I'm up, I will answer you. But if not, you know, and I'll answer you during the day if I'm busy or something and I know they're sleeping. But you just have to have that communication with people because you don't want to turn people away if they do have opposite hours as us. Because it's just not fair. I, I can't help when they work, you know, and I can't help when I sleep. Sometimes I'm up all through the night because I can't sleep. And I'm like, oh, hey, you know, because I've had people work night shift. And they're like, well, I work night shift. You know, I'm really scared that I'll, I'll fall behind or something because I sleep all day. Girl, I did that. I used to do that many years ago. You know, I worked the night shift and I did sleep all day. And then I'd wake up and go to and go to work. So anybody who does this business, I try to work with them and I'm super transparent. I let them know, you know, hey, I'm here to help you. Hey, let me know for real. Um, but you can't also just check in when, you know, you're about to hit director, star director, superstar, lead, you know, you have to continually check in with them. You know, I, I know it's super hard, especially when you start growing, but, you know, once a month, just be like, hey, girl, I see you. I see your PRV. Check your number. Shout them out. Send them a voice message. Um, I feel that's what's really helped me. Um, I moved at the end of last year into this year, I was moving and my life was chaos. And my team literally just stepped up because I literally just, it was really hard for me. It was super hard. And my, I was transparent with my team and they were like, I got you. We're going to get you through these next couple of months. So I feel if you, you put your team first and you put them as people and not just numbers, they will respect you and they will definitely give more than you would ever think so um so that's basically how I lead you know um I give them all the things I possibly can I'm super transparent with them um I shout them out if they got freaking 25 PRV girl I see you you got some sales on the board how about we get you to 200 let's get you active that's a little more a little bit more money you know baby steps do the baby steps and the work to the big steps um, because not everybody has a big network they can grow with, but that's okay. Oh, excuse me. Do the little things and then it will go up and it will hopefully have like a triple effect. But that's how I lead. And if y'all have any questions, let me know. Listen, can I just say that all of these ladies have just like brought the damn heat and I am so sorry for cussing, but like y'all have absolutely given me everything that I need um and you can see I'm emotional but like you guys I don't know if any of my other girls want to end the call but you guys have given us so so much and you guys have so much value to give and I hate to hear that you guys 
think that sometimes you don't have value to bring because you do. Um, and I absolutely love everything that you said, Brittany, because you're absolutely right about reaching out to every single person and meeting them where they are and their schedule and all of that. Because I'll be honest, there was a lot of issues with me at the beginning. Um, well, not at the beginning, but when I was building my business, because I was teaching all day long, I'm busy all day long. I can't listen to your voice messages. I can't train. I can't see anything on Facebook. I can't comment on social media. I can't do any of those things during the day after five o'clock. Yeah, I can be away. I can be aware or whatever, but meeting people where there are is so, so important. Does anybody else want to say anything before I stop the recording and then we can anybody? I'll say something. I okay. need to rest and Whitney's on the beach. So, okay. Yeah. Um, number one, all of that was absolutely amazing. And if you guys think that you don't have anything to give, I'm going to tell you this. I have been in this business for eight years, April, 2016 to this April was eight years. And for me to take two, two full pages of notes and you guys, I mean, spoke what, 10 minutes a piece, you guys, and even those of you who did not speak, I want you to know right now that you have stuff to offer. Um, if you haven't heard that yet, I'm telling you now, um, we have a group chat that's going on behind the scenes over here and we are all just floored by how amazing and how much you guys have to share. So I want that to be a lesson to you that you have so much to share, even when you feel like you don't. You run your business as you, and that is your superpower. You are you, and nobody else is you. And just the different pieces that each of you hit, but the passion that each of you have for your business um, is contagious. I have chills. Um, I have teared up a couple of times. So I want you guys to know that if this is the first time you've heard it <laughs> from us this evening, you are amazing. You have so much to give. And then those of you who are not speaking, you also have a lot to give. And you showed up tonight and you were doing the things that it takes to be successful in this business. You're showing up when you don't want to. You're doing the things that successful people do. And that's the number one tip that I give anybody in this business because that's what we did. We were told, hey, go live. Hey, do a training. And did we want to do it? Absolutely not. I still get scared to death to do half the things that I do. You wouldn't tell because I'm a lot more seasoned in it now, right? The seasoning is a lot thicker on the cast iron skillet, but there's still like the scaredness behind it. We just hide right? it better, guys. We, we just do. hide it better. Because we've done it a lot more. It doesn't get, well, it gets a little easier. I'll say that. It gets a little easier, but keep doing the things that are going to push you out of your comfort zone. If you're asked to train, do it. If you're sent an email from Cincy that's like, hey, can you... Can you answer this? Can you do this for me? Can you do that for me? If you're asked to go live into your team page, do it. Do it scared. Okay. That's all I have to say. Anya, I don't really want wait, to really wait, wait, you're wait. unmuted. Okay. Listen, listen, I have a thing to say. I also want you guys all to remember that like we all hear things very, very differently. So we're all listening to the same training, but I guarantee you all of our notes look very, very different. And so when you sit here and you think that you don't have anything to offer, just your different perspective and the way you take something in is going to bless someone else so much. So when we're like, share, and you're like, but someone shared about sponsoring 15,000 times, it doesn't matter. Because one, we take things at different levels, right? We take things and we're going to understand them differently. You understand things different when you're eight than when you're 12 then versus 16, then 20, right? Then 30, you see it differently. And you're like, oh, that's what my parents meant. Okay, it's the same thing. But also like, we just understand things differently. So the way I might explain something, let's just be real, might be super confusing to someone. And they're like, what is she talking about? But then say Amber comes and she explains it and they're like, oh, that's what she meant. That is why it's so important for all of us to share. We all come from different walks of life. Our leadership journeys all look very different and it's a blessing to have all the different perspectives. So share you guys, because you do have so much to offer. And also it's just a really big blessing to be like, to listen to you guys and know like you guys are our babies. Like I know that sounds so weird, but you're our babies. And so to hear your perspective and your take and what you're really doing in the nitty gritty everyday life with your leadership is just such a blessing 
for us to hear. It's just, it's really cool. So I appreciate you guys. That's it. And Whitney, I don't know if the real Whitney wants to talk. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> if the real Whitney wants to stand up. However, I just want all of you guys to know that I learn stuff from you guys every single time y'all train. So don't feel like because I'm up here as an SSD, I don't know what the hell I'm doing every day. Usually we all learn from each other and you guys say, I don't know if Amber just said that in the chat, but we all literally learn from each other. I learned something from you guys every single time. And that's why I've been so emotional this entire call, because everything that you guys have said is everything that I needed to hear. And we love y'all so, so much. Thank you guys for showing up live. We love you more than you know. Um, continue to share, continue being the light because you guys all have such bright lights to share and do not feel like you don't have anything to share because there's only one you. There's only one you. Do it scared. Um, walk in faith. I'm trying to remember all the other ones. Shine your light. What's that mean? Me? You too. Recognize. Okay. Okay. Right. Love y'all. Bye. Okay.